All right, you game show. You better work this time. Sorry, poor laptop. I got an ice bag under you now. Hopefully you're faster this time. Game show is eating up. Not two CPUs worth of CPU. Yes. It looks like we can actually stream Songbringer now. That game show is not eating up all of the CPU, which caused one of the weirdest bugs I've ever seen. Anyways, let's close that. I'm going to get on with this sort of like a walkthrough almost video. Perverdad Speedrun Songbringer World Seed Wizard. Ice bag! Ice bag! That does sound like a really good seed to use. It's never gonna slow down again. As long as we use ice bag. Wait, I'll put the. Oh, there! If I put the mouse. Okay, is the mouse gone? I can't see the mouse, but apparently you can on the stream. What's up, trailer? Okay, I've already got wizard started. I'm gonna start it again. Just to make this an officially like one video. I'm gonna be pointing out like tips and tricks during this. Like how to beat certain bosses. How to go about beating the game in general. Mouse is gone, yes. Nice. It's like it doesn't even exist. <laughs> Damn, it's a hot day. Yeah, Jacobus, Songbringer is all the way done now. Yep, all the way done, all released. There are updates to come though, so there'll be minor improvements, um, items added and stuff in, in the upcoming updates. So we've got some updates planned. Morning. Yes, it's morning there. Cool. So the game's running fine now, it seems like. It's still causing my poor little laptop to his fan to just go crazy hard. But anyways, my uh, I wanted to say, if you're watching this video for like the first time, you're like looking at Songbringer, I'm playing this in 60 frames a second, um, but it's streaming only in 15 frames a second because of my poor little laptop. So, just note that. If you want to check out Songbringer in a better frame rate, check out some other people's YouTube videos or Twitch streams. People that have good computers. Try, try them. Rocket Buddy, what's up, man? Oh, salad. So as far as buying the soundtrack goes, um, I'm still working on it. So yeah, it's coming. Um, and um, basically, what I want to do, since you know the game has all its, you know, all its music is like procedural, um, I want to, I want to make the soundtrack unique. So it's like almost stands on its own. So the game's audio feels different, kind of on each world seed a little bit. But the, the soundtrack's gonna be kind of something, you know, like sort of like more permanent, like set in stone, if you will. Um, so it needs to be kind of like something that stands on its own and is unique. And that's why I'm spending some quality time still making that. So I'll release that when it's like, when it's ready to be a quality release. Alright, so I'm getting the sword. This is probably a good step in your progress playing Songbringer. You don't have to get the sword, though. You can play the entire game without the sword. I just proved that the other day. World Seed Bell actually was a, is a good one to do if you're doing a hatless, or I mean a swordless run. Um, because you start with Bell, who has this great attack power. Um, but the trade-off is that starting with Bell, you don't get to start with Jib, and Jib has the basically the the health power in the sense that he finds items for you, and you can 
you know, get more health. Without Vel, with, with Vel, you're not getting health from all this other stuff that you would normally get it from, so it's a trade-off. So what I'm doing here is I'm beating the first little mini-boss. This mini-boss you always find on your path as you're headed to Dungeon 1. And if you get lost, if you can't find Dungeon 1 in any world, what's going to happen is you're going to find a bio detector. And a bio detector is an item that gives you a green dot on your map and shows you where like a dungeon is. So you use a bio detector if you're lost. <clears throat> and the game gives you one if you do get lost, basically. Malios, what's up, man? Thank you. Chip says getting the... The sword is a bad idea. Yeah, of course. Of course I'll keep streaming. There's, like I said, there's more development to be done with Songbringer. There's minor improvements I want to make. There's lots of little, like, there's updates that um, I have planned with Double Eleven. So we're going to be releasing these updates. And... Oh, man, I forgot how much I love the new top hat. Hold to aim. Your top hat so accurate. Cheeks, what's up, man? Release Haib. So I'm in Dungeon One. I've got the sword already, the top hat, um, bombs now, right there in that room. And I'm going straight to the boss. Basically, I'm going. I'm, this is a speed run, so I'm going for as few rooms as possible and to just straight up beat the game as fast as you can. Oh no, homework! gonna get serious about beating this guy. So this drop, this first boss is the name the Drop boss. He's part of a creature called the Drop. The Drop are these people with these goat-headed skulls and stuff like that. Um, all of the monsters and all the creatures in Songbringer, they have these worms in their brains. They're being controlled by these crazy mind-controlling worms. Teak, no, sorry, I have not seen any Steam messages. It has been a busy ass day. I've been on the AMA all morning, releasing the game last night, and dealing with everything from emails to issues with some people's platforms, and like, you know what I mean? It's been a busy, busy morning. So I haven't even gotten to all emails yet. There's a lot of a lot of emails I got to get to right after this stream uh, and stuff like that. So it's lots of work, man. It's like F-Zero. So, okay, so keys to beating that boss, that, that last boss. Um, if you kind of stand a little bit to the bottom of him, sort of, and kind of keep him centered, he's not going to be able to use his big, um, his big hammer attack on you. So that's one key to beating him faster. Kind of try and stay below him, but he still gets you and stuff because he can walk on you and hit you and stuff like that knock you around but um but he should be pretty doable um if you do that and the keys a key to that to basically every boss in this game is that you want to you i mean it's just a basic math your your sword does a lot of damage the top hat basically your sword does one whole tooth of damage top hat does a half tooth of damage so your sword is one of your most powerful weapons especially when it gets upgraded later in the game um, so anyways if you can hit hit bosses with the sword as much as possible it can help and it, not, it doesn't work for every boss because some bosses you can't always hit but anyways if you can be like a dog on a bone with a boss um, with your sword it can really help sometimes Song rear cart drops the drops the face. Oh, salad! This is one of your best, one of your best quotes of all time, man. Nice favorite new game, sweet. Oh, what's the official pronunciation? 
Oh man, I hope I'm not ruining your bet. Um, but it's rock. Ah! So, this ice dungeon is always tricky because it's slippery and these freezing ice balls from those guys. Batfu! Oh! Batfu! May he live! May he live on in our memory! So, tricks to beating the icy guys. You notice I placed two. Whoops, I don't need that. I placed two bombs um, in the room a little bit after. Um, a little bit after getting into the room. Oh, he did? Ah! This is, this is basically one of the easiest boss fights to get wrong. Um, and the way this boss fight can go wrong is that you basically get hit with the ice. Especially a lot at the beginning. So, keys to fighting this boss. You've really got to take out these side dragons first. Um, that really, really helps. And then, try and get hit as little as possible by the ice beams. I mean, I know it probably like not even worth saying but it you should you know try and dodge all that ice you possibly can because it hurts you a lot because he freezes you you lose time and he can sometimes hit you again with some kind of attack while you're still frozen which is like double the damage so getting hit with ice really really sucks Tr avoid that by using your blink with this boss and first of all killing those side dragons Thank you for the congratulations! So, and um, there's never any boss meters, never, there's never a visual indication for uh, bosses being close to death, but there is an audio indication. So if you're paying attention to the music, the drums get more intense as the boss gets closer to death. And it's a way that you can kind of gauge where you're at in a boss fight. And also, I guess there is one little bit of dual indication. It's kind of subtle, but bosses do turn a little bit red and flash when they're close to death. Yes, you're right, Biter Kid, that totally is the boss that messes up speedruns a lot. I've died on that boss more than any other boss, just because you get hit with ice a few too many times and you're all out of health, there's no more health left. And sometimes you don't, like in this particular speed run, I don't have any cactuses yet. So I don't have any way to heal myself at that point. So going into that boss fight, you only have the health that you have. And, um, and those two in the containers at the bottom of the screen. There we go. Let's get those on. So I like to undo that, or unmap those, so that the speed run, it just works out better for the speed run. So I forgot to notice, but it should have showed the time, it should have flashed the amount of time since the last boss for for beating the dragon there. Forgot to notice. Oh well. Here we are, this is like the floaty dungeon. I love the drums in this one. Pipples. <laughs> Whoa, that was good timing for drawing the sword there. Pretty accidental. Ah. Man, 
man. Those spiders really got out that time. So, this is a pretty critical part of the run here where you get your first crafting. Um, I got the teleport at the last dungeon, but this is where it really matters because now you can go and like craft something and get, and get powerful. Start to get more powerful. One of the most powerful things I think you can craft is ice. Well, I mean, fire and lightning and poison and fear, ah, shit, all the elements have pretty pretty cool attack powers. Um, but ice is pretty unique in that it can freeze enemies. So it's really more of like a, a tool in a way. It's a good tool to have in your arsenal. Dang, I am thirsty. I can get some more water. No, wait. Coconut water! Which we have! Okay, so we're at 13 minutes of gameplay time so far. Speed run, right? I'm like cracking. This isn't like a marathon speed run. I'm just going for actual game time. I'm definitely going to pause a bit and chat with y'all. Right? Trailer's right, right? Mmm. Goddamn. I love coconut water. Mm. Mm hmm. I'm telling you, it's a hot day today. Maybe it's a run on speed. <laughs> Oh. Uh, so, crafting crafting something at all is a really important step in your run of Songbringer. Um, you're making a choice at that point. Crafting things is permanent. There's no way to undo a craft, but there's plenty of warnings in the game about doing it, so... Um, the, yes, but anyways, anything you craft is going to be good. I've done every single, I think I've done every single kind of um, element combined with all the weapons. And they all have their own advantages. So count yourself like, you know, don't count yourself as like, oh, I, I, my run's all broken because I crafted this. Consider it an opportunity to try and learn another way to kick ass in Songbringer. Because there's lots of ways to kick ass. You can be a badass war machine of death. Destruction. Get all your aggression out. I really love these bot these little mini boss fights, just killing so many enemies. And man, this new top hat feature to hold the aim is super cool. Check this out. I'm gonna throw my top hat backwards. Whoa! Oh yeah, Frozen Clone. It is, yeah. It's pretty important to have um, knowledge of where the secrets are. So there's like, there's a lot of secrets in Songringer. There's not too many, right? There At one point there actually were too many secrets. I remember a point in the development when I had so many secrets on the Songbringer dungeon, the ship, that it, it just felt like cheap. You're like, there's a secret there, there's a secret there, there's a secret on every wall. It's like every wall has a secret, you just know there's secrets everywhere. So it made the secrets less special. And so I learned my lesson there. You gotta have just the right amount of secrets, not too much. <laughs> machine. <laughs> so now, so check this out. Now that I've got the power to freeze enemies, um, boss fights become 
a lot more manageable. Well, the one, the bosses that are weak to ice. There's only a couple bosses that are actually weak to ice, but um, this happens to be one of them here. This blob. He's not. Um, I should say vulnerable to ice. You know, he's not weak to ice. He's just vulnerable. He's actually resistant to ice. Most bosses are resistant to every element, meaning there's no element that just totally kicks ass on bosses, but um, but some of them do have a particular propensity. So anyways, important concept to fighting this boss, you've got to kill one of these little guys. That's the whole point. If you don't kill one of these little purple guys, it doesn't... Yeah, if you don't kill one of the little purple guys, this boss fight will go on forever. Because what happens is, if all three of them are still on the screen, they will be able to recombine back into the bigger blob. So, the key here, the trick here, is to kill one of them. And the same goes for when you fight this boss again later in the game, where there's two of these big bosses. Same thing, you gotta kill at least one of these little purple guys, that's the trick. So, it's kind of a puzzle. Some of the bosses have their own little puzzly elements. How do you know when and where a secret is? So, um, if you don't already know the run, if you're just on a on a like a brand new run, you have no idea where anything is. Pay attention to the music. Um, if you stand near a secret wall, a secret bush. A secret rock that you can bomb. Any kind of secret has th uh, this music muffling effect going on. So the music is as it is. I'll show you if it comes up here in a, in a bit. But anyways, if you're near secrets, the music muffles. So just if you pay attention, you can kind of hear that things sound a little bit less bright and less less loud. So now I got the Courage Shield, which is going to play a really important role. You need to um, have the Courage Shield, especially for the final boss fight. Um, because you can stand still to block a little bit of damage. And there's this one attack that the final boss has that always shoots out this wave that's really hard to dodge. So, But the best thing is to just stand still. You stand still and it bounces off your Courage Shield. Which is kind of the point of the game, to like learn to let go, to succeed by letting go in some, in, in sometimes, you know? So, I just beat the floaty dungeon and the blob boss. Um, earlier on, way earlier in the run, I got the, the quest to get the spirits. Now I'm actually on the part of the run so that I can pick up the spirits and later I'll be going back to Brutus to actually pick up the flask before fighting the final boss because I can't beat the final boss without the flask and full life containers and everything. What? You're right! This is 1-900 material right here. Yeah, I like that too. It makes him more ethereal when he's like all, when you kind of like walk through him. It's like, is he, is he real? Is he actually here? Or is he just a figment of your imagination? Is he your spirit guide? Is he physical? Can you hit him? Can he hit you? For the LucasArts adventure games? Hey, wait, has anybody actually called a 900 number and asked about that? I'm gonna switch into HUD minimal mode. <clears throat> okay, another really important thing for speedrunning Songbringer, at least that I've found, is that you gotta have as many cactus containers as possible. Cactus pouches. You never called Nintendo's line? I didn't either. But I'd like to hear from somebody that did. What was it like? Teague, thanks for joining, man. I appreciate you. Have a good night, man. Thanks for joining.
Yeah, so cactus pouches are super important because you're basically going to be eating cactuses all the time fighting the final boss. He's going to just wear away at you like crazy. You've got to wear away at him too. He's got a lot of health. And um, having all those cactuses helps you refill. Because at least in this speed run, I, I, there's only time to get one flask. And that's another way you can refill your courage with the flasks. Thank you, T. So this is the second of, no wait, the first, sorry. This is the first of two swordless dungeons where this dude here, Zero, steals your sword. And in this one, you learn to meditate. And this meditation is a powerful tool. It's a powerful ability. It allows you to open these big old doors. So it's part of, you know, part of like a lock and key system, I guess. But it also um, gives you important backstory in the world. It teaches you weaknesses to bosses too if you meditated these certain pillars. Um, you can sit down and meditate and gain back your health too. So if you sit down, just meditate, you can refill all your health, but it's slow. It takes a while. So, um, but that, that is an option. If you are totally stuck in the game, but you have meditate, just sit down and meditate for a while and you'll be back to full health in, after a, a while. Straight out of cramping. What's up, man? Thanks. How does it feel to have the game finally released? It feels amazing. Um, it's like a, a big relief. Super duper big relief. Um, yeah, I was all nervous and butterflies in my stomach last night when I was clicking that button. I was like, oh my god! I have to actually press the button now. I have to click release. I'm so nervous. What if something goes wrong? What if, what if Steam doesn't publish my game tonight like I promised everybody? What if there's something wrong with the bug and maybe in the, in the game and maybe there's bugs in it? Maybe there's game-breaking bugs that no one's found in all the thousands of beta testers. You know what I mean? All these worries. I had butterflies in my stomach and it's freaking nice to have that over with. And the only thing I'm worried about now is just haters. And I'm sure there's going to be haters. And so dealing with that's going to be an emotional challenge, I'm sure, um, to, you know, be, a, still be, you know, a responsive developer and fix bugs and things like that. But, you know, you kind of have to deal with all that. Yeah, yes, I did. Nice. Okay, Hater Raid comes in several flavors so I'm going straight from the um, from the first swordless dungeon to the second swordless dungeon it just kind of works that way in the speed run um, but after this I'm gonna have another life container or I mean another demon's tooth um, another level of the shield and another cactus pouch and and ice armor this is, this is the dungeon that has ice armor, which basically shortens the duration that you're frozen by enemies. So this is a really great one to have actually before you battle the dragon, if you can, is to get this ice armor. But the ice armor is usually kind of deep in this, deep in the game. So you're, you're, sometimes you don't get it before you fight the dragon. Yeah, true, true. How long did it take? This is three years into making this game. Um, it just got released after about up about three years. So there I got another cactus pouch. Once again, very important to have as many cactus pouches as you can. These are the lower pillars. Check it out. We can meditate here. I'll show you what I mean about meditation. I need to have that equipped to A anyways. But this is where you can learn about some of the bosses. You know, this actually reveals what some of the boss's weaknesses are if you meditate in front of these pillars. And it also gives you lore for the world. This one is actually just lore about sand. 
But anyways, that's just the story element. Let's get back to the speed run. How the different procedural worlds look and are laid out, they all look about the same. It's not any different artwork. It's always the same 10 bosses. It's always the same story. So don't expect it to be like a different story or anything. Um, it's just that it, the whole overworld is laid out completely differently for each world scene. And all of the dungeons have completely different layouts too. And even the music is procedural, so its melodies change a little bit depending on your world scene. Um, and so also, other things that depend on your world seed are... Um, I just noticed the bug there. That's good. It's already on my list, though. Um, other things that depend on your world seed. Um, the order of the bosses. Um, the order of the items that you get. So a lot of the items in Songbringer are kind of like Metroid-style gate items where you get an item and that allows you to make more progress in the world. And um, and so Songbringer's procedural generation has to know, you know, um, if you place the glove here, you got to place, place the chip there. You know what I mean? It's like, it has to be playable. So... Oh yeah, I already equipped that. You hate sand because it's coarse and gets in your underwear? Okay, so that is... Okay, this trick to these guys is you basically you just kind of like, kind of got to blink a lot. Because they're making you get all panicked with their darkness, their evilness, their fear is getting into you causing you to panic. So what was that, five minutes for that that segment? It's kind of a long one. That's a long dungeon, five minutes. Okay, and that, that by the way, is the hidden dungeon. So you enter it by using the cup, as you saw me do there. This is where, so if you find this fountain, if you find this fountain in Songbringer, this is an important one to give you more life and stuff like that basically make you be able to beat the game. You kind of got to do as many dungeons as you can so you have as much health as you do as you can, as much courage. How much of the lore is discovered via different seeds? I, th I would say each one of your runs you're going to find out something else for a while until you've played the game a lot because you know some worlds you don't notice that there's a, a lore pillar somewhere you know it's you're gonna you're gonna get different ones each time I would think. Um, but there is only like, there is only what, four on the overworld, and ten, no, nine? Nine or ten in the dungeons. Um, so, hold on, do I need, I need, I need more diamonds? I got 243, I need like seven more diamonds! And then, of course, it's the same thing with the story. Like, you may get some of the story on one run and some of the story on another, depending on where you go in the world and stuff. There's one, there's five diamonds. We need two more diamonds, come on. I'm buying the Hyper Top Hat. This is an incredible weapon. The Hyper Top Hat is dope, super dope. Highly recommend it. And if you can craft, okay, if you not craft, but if you can go buy the um, the bomb magnet, the top hat bomb magnet, as well as the hyper top hat, you become amazingly powerful. And then just get a bunch of bomb containers, and you can throw bombs with your top hat. Super great. Such a you become a powerful, powerful warrior at that point. What were some of my prime inspirations for the concept? Um, Prime Inspirations, Crystallis for the NES, The Legend of Zelda for the NES, Super Secret of Mana, Mystic Quest, games like that, 8-bit, 16-bit era games mostly. And then visually, of course, visually I'm very inspired by some recent classics like Sword and Sorcery, Crawl, um, you know, pixel art games from today. 
Did I get Absolver? I have not gotten anything. I've just been just been releasing this game non-stop for for a while. Crystallis, yes. That was another hidden um That was another hidden cactus container there. And here I'm picking up some more diamonds so that later I can buy um fear before finding the final boss. Um, here is another secret. Cactus. Any films or books inspire me for this game? Um, films, of course, totally. Star Wars, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, you know, shows like um, Firefly. They call me Rock because of my rock hard abs. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Who's who is the one streaming that one? So I got I got the hyper top hat now, which is super dope, and it's a and it's crafted with ice. So this is a really rad tool and weapon now. Those viper guys, I just like froze and blinked past that viper guy because the viper guys are vicious. Watch out for the vipers. I almost always try and avoid them, especially on a speed run because they just, they take a long, a long time to kill and they are dangerous as hell. Alexio, cool. Thanks, Alexio. Thanks, Kukuriku. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining the stream today. Will I get an actual top hat? Actually, I do wear a wizard hat a lot. Um, especially when I go to expos. So, because my internet handle is wizard foo, I dress like a wizard. But yes, I do need to do some kind of like top hat cosplay. That would be cool. <laughs> Screw rocks haircut. So this is where having a lot of different L um, weapons comes into play. And when you're fighting rooms like this and you have something like as awesome as the hyper top hat, you can just continually keep throwing your top hat. Because the top hat does, um, the top hat bounces when it runs out of damage that it can do. So that's kind of how the core of the, the, top, the top hat works. It, you throw it, it does a certain amount of damage then returns. So, um, and of course it has a maximum distance, but um, because it's got that maximum damage, you want to just keep, you want to like, um, basically keep it in motion as much as possible, you know, and it can do as much damage as possible. But having the hyper top hat really helps because the hyper top hat doubles the amount of damage that it can do, which essentially, um, you know, you can just keep on, it can power through a group of enemies, basically. And then in, and then combine that with having the top hat magnet, which I cannot get in this speed run because it's out of the way. But anyways, if you have the top hat magnet, you can set a bomb, wait a few seconds, then pick it up with the top hat and throw it. And that is a very powerful weapon when you have it when you also have the hyper top hat because it, you can send it flying into a room full of enemies and it just sets off bombs in the middle, which is super handy. Oh, nice, flood relief, yes. I'm so glad to hear that. So um, this is the fire boss. He's weak to fire. This is his, you know, his one element, if he's weaker than any other element, is his, his ice. So I'm constantly trying to throw the top, the ice top at him and get him hit with that. So not only is he frozen and I can hit him a bunch, but um, he also takes a good amount of damage from the, just this, the fact that it's an ice element. Usually when you're fighting the fire boss, you do all right with your health because he's got these little spiders that go out and because they're so annoying, they you can get some life from them sometimes. Sometimes they will drop some health. 
So, that usually if you're doing well fighting this boss, you're really not going to run out of health much. I, as, I say that as I'm basically running out of health, but so I'm just eating a few cactuses here and there. The key to this boss is to just be like a dog on a bone with him, with the sword. Um, if you don't have the sword, you definitely want to have a crafted top hat if possible. They're even playing with Seed Harvey, that's cool. So that dungeon run was eight minutes long, that segment. Oh shoot. <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. Backwards top bad throw. Backwards top bad throw. Diagonal backwards top bad throw. Diagonal upwards backwards top bad throw. I love the new hold to aim feature. It's like my. It's really freaking made the controls for this game a lot more precise. I feel like you're really just dope. You're doing all these sweet hat tricks. Um. So I'm. I just did. I'm doing this out of order right here. I'm going from dungeon. I'm skipping dungeon six basically. Because this one here, if I go straight to 8, um, I can get the chip, which makes 6 like super much faster. Because 6 has the acid boss, which is this crazy giant worm, he has a lot of health. And he goes under, gr under the ground and flies up in the air a lot, so there's a lot of time when you can't hit, hit him at all. So, if you have the chip, which doubles the amount, the damage of the sword, if you've got that, you can um, hit him a lot. You can you basically kill him a lot faster. It makes that boss fight a lot less of a duration. So that's why I skipped skip that boss and go straight to this one. Shit, that guy's going crazy. Oh no! That's like never happened. I actually did not beat those guys in time. Woo! Damn. Oh, man. It's not, it always surprises me somewhere. There's always some enemy that gets me. The dragon boss almost... I've died so many times in permadeath mode fighting the dragon boss. It's not even funny. My cheat karma is really, really bad. It's like, quit the game before it saves! It's permadeath mode! Yep. Yeah. It's kind of got that feature. That hidden feature, you could say. Just so that you can learn speedruns. You know, you, instead of having to start your whole run again, you can die on a speedrun and learn from your mistake. But it doesn't count for your time. It always counts your time so basically if you're going for a, like a record speed run or whatever you fail if you die so keys for fighting that room which is full of enemies back there is well, once again keep the top hat flying um, and having it crafted with ice really helps because it causes a lot of enemies to get frozen and then setting off bombs too, so that's one way, one strategy you can use to kind of clear big rooms full of enemies is you could try um, eating a cactus, running into the room, and then dropping some bombs. If you've got cactuses and bombs. Oh yeah, so the um, proc gen music is, the overworld music isn't even proc gen. It's, that's totally um, that's totally just one track so far. But I do have plans to do maybe like three different versions of the Overworld theme songs so that it is somewhat proc gen. So far what is proc gen in Songbringer is all the dungeons except for the fire dungeon. I haven't finished the fire dungeon or the tower music to be procedural. It's I've written one track basically, but now I gotta go take those two tracks and make them both 12 tracks each. So, 
and then take the overworld music and make that better and stuff like that. And I got all that planned for the updates, so the art quality will get a little better, the music quality will get a little better. You thought you thought the overworld music was? Oh. Uh, nope, it wasn't. But there are lots of different versions of it. Or not lots of, there's two different versions of the overworld theme song that plays. And then there's the long, long, um, alternate world music. It's like a 12 minute track or something like that. That plays, and it's almost like four tracks in itself. So it kind of gives you the feeling that there's a lot of different stuff going on. All right, now that we have the chip, everything is like, we're just gonna mow through enemies in this easier dungeon. So I went to dungeon eight, grabbed the chip, and I can go back to dungeon six, and it's just gonna be a freaking a breeze. And I think there's one more cactus container to pick up here, uh, right here. And so we're about 41 minutes into the run. There's gonna be about a half an hour left of gameplay time to speed run the game. Probably will finish in like about an hour, 15 minutes, something like that. Cue the blue balls. <laughs> nice one, because of the blue ball guys. Normal maps? No. There's no normal maps, but there are um, a bunch of different shaders, but the technique is not normal mapping. Um, normal mapping I considered. I was like, maybe I should do that. And maybe even I will eventually add normal mapping. But there is a bloom shader, a lighting shader, a blur shader, a psychedelic shader. There's a lot of different shaders. There's a levels shader. There's a soft light shader. There's like a color burn effect going on. All of it kind of adds up to make the pixel art seem better than it actually is. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I were to turn off all of the shaders, Songbringer would not look like Songbringer anymore. It would look just like a, I don't know, it wouldn't look as good for sure. Yeah, that's probably just that there's highlights in the pixel art and there's the bloom shader going on to sometimes brighten certain things. Um, but yeah, normal maps are a sweet technique. Actually, it probably would really improve the look of Songbringer to add normal maps to the heroes and stuff like that. But the problem about it is, the challenge with it is that basically, you've gotta go create nor 3D normal maps basically for all of your, or you can still do them in 2D, but, um, you gotta go create all those normal maps in addition to all your pixel art. What the hell? Twitch just like asked me to log in. Dude, I'm live streaming right now. Oh my god. We were chatting and now. Oh, dude. My password is like. Son of a bitch! It just logged me out of Twitch while I was chatting with you guys. And it doesn't have my password saved, because it's a long-ass password. Ah, oh, what the hell am I gonna do? Shazzle. I gotta get the, the chat window open in a different... Wait a minute, can't I just go to freaking... Hold on, I'm just gonna open Safari on my iPad to the Twitch chat. So sorry guys, I'm missing some of your chat messages right here, but I'll be back here in one second. And from then on, I'll be getting your chat messages. All right, I think I'm up. I think I'm back. So crafted poison, well, acid bombs right there. 
didn't really miss anything. All right, cool. This is going to allow us to get past these spiky horn looking tile blocks, blocking tiles, these things right here. These you can set a bomb, an acid bomb, or a, a, an acid anything. Acid top hat, acid ghost sword, acid jib shield. Um, what else can you get acid with? Said the ghost sword, bombs. Oh, acid blink. You can acid blink onto those, kill them. All of your weapons you can craft with any element. Including Jib's shield, which is a weapon. So if you buy Jib's shield, it's only like 90 diamonds, right? And you buy Jib's shield, it's a really good investment actually because you can craft one of your elements with Jib's shield. And whenever Jib uses his shield, acid meditation. That's a, that's a funny combo. I wonder what that would be like. <laughs> Probably really good. Um, so yeah, Jib, when you craft Jib's shield, he becomes a, his shield becomes a weapon. So like, if you craft his shield with fire, all of a sudden Jib is like lighting enemies on fire whenever they get near him. Foo Wizard, that would be the greatest password. I'm changing my password tonight to Foo Wizard. And I'm announcing it right here now. Let's all log into my account, huh? What's he? I'm freezing that freaking viper because he's so dangerous. And what sucks is if you get hit by these guys, now I'm all like panicked out. Okay, anyways, there. If you blink a lot, you can eventually get to where you're going. Always helps to eat a cactus before a big room like this. You get back a little bit of health. You turn invincible for a little bit. That's a big tip to fighting rooms like this and fighting in general in, in, in Songbringer. If you save a cactus for a big moment like this, um, it will. the cactus has a stronger effect if you haven't used it recently. So like if you eat cactuses like crazy, your invincibility doesn't kick in and um, it's just basically the cactus is like less powerful. It still heals you as much, you always get back a full tooth of health when or courage when you eat a cactus but you're not going to get the invincibility whoa whoa somehow blink through the middle of those guys it's lucky yeah there's a tolerance for the cacti so if you if you try and eat it eat too many at once um you don't get the invincibility you still get the um the revealing of secrets though so if you eat a cactus it also reveals where secrets are like if you're paying attention to the look at the walls and you'll see that the walls will turn a little bit transparent when you eat a cactus uh, if there's a secret there and um, when you're on the overworld it will highlight bushes that you can burn and um, bomb and places you can set a bomb to get through the rocks and stuff like that so normally this boss fight is a longer one but since I have ice I can freeze him and since I, since I have the glove and chip I'm doing like maximal damage to kill him as fast as possible. So this boss fight is a lot shorter with good weapons. Also if you have ice you can freeze this bottom and it helps you to get away from his like little acid attacks. So yeah, basically, the pattern is you want to like freeze him if possible, hit him as much as you can, dodge all his attacks, you know, it's a standard boss fight. Red Saint, what's up man? The launch is going great! How you doing? doing a permadeath speed run today and it's kind of like a walkthrough going through the whole game so we got the boots you can walk faster now um, but now all of the main dungeons are finished so I'm gonna be warping to Songbringer actually do I have 200 now oh, I do I can just get the um, I can buy fear which is the last element I'm gonna find in this run 
Um, it really helps to have fear crafted with something. Oh, and I gotta pick up the, the um, this the flask. So I can refill health during the final boss fight. So that's, the, in this world, this is where the Jib Shield is. But all I'm really picking up is the, um, the fear because I don't have time in this run to get any of the sacks, the diamond sacks, which basically allow you to carry more diamonds. At this point, I can only carry 250 diamonds, so I can only buy like one thing at, at, at a time. Did coding take you a longer amount of time or drawing the maps? Definitely coding. Yeah, coding by far is the most time consuming of all development tasks in my in my experience. At least making this game. So, I've got the fear sword upgrade. Now that I've got all the all the crafting things, things I'm things done that I want to craft, I can use this note to basically, so this is an important important thing. When you're when you're playing your run, Songbringer, you want to make sure that you have all the crafting done that you want to do when you give this note. So, because you can't craft anything after this. So, if you still want to keep exploring the world, if you haven't fought enough dungeons yet, you want to definitely go hold off. Don't do this yet until you've fought a lot of dungeons and you're ready for this. There's ample warning in the game about that. Probably because of what you use to code it. <laughs> Alright, so this is the second to last dungeon. It's the ship. It's the bottom floor of your ship. Here we're actually getting the second level of the Blink Orb, which is really going to help fight the fight um, final boss and also this upcoming boss we're about to face, the Lightning Witch. I just ate a cactus right there because there's a spirit wall right there on the left. So you see when I ate the cactus, I got my psychedelic powers and it bursted open this wall over here. So we can go through, and I'm eating another cactus here because this wall right here is also a spirit wall, as it happens. And this is going to give me the uh, circuit breaker, which is going to help fight this next boss. This is basically lightning armor. It protects you a bit from lightning damage. And this upcoming boss here has this crazy attack with um, these spir lightning spirals that are like bound to hit you. They're freaking crazy hard to dodge. Um, especially because of how this boss fight um, is laid out. So it really helps to have the lightning armor. And this, believe it or not, I think is the, only the third time you ever get a, a bomb container or something like that in this run. You don't actually get many bombs. Uh, but it can really help to have bombs, especially if you have the top hat magnet and the hyper top hat so you can just throw bombs. That's a super cool strategy. I grab the key. Remember, this key is not okay. I got it. That's important. We've got to have this key over here to get in this uh, this door. To drop off the smith and attain the you know get through this dungeon. Um, I like to go and kill all these enemies here and let Jib scan them and um, and leave the leave the health there so that. As, as I leave this dungeon, I can pick up this health. Um, so, question for the stream. I have a question for you all. What should I do? Save or kill the smith? There's two endings to Songbringer. It depends on whether or not you save smith. What'll it be? Shall we save Smith? Or shall we kill Smith? 
I'm eating another cactus because this also is a spirit wall up here. You get carried away killing these guys because it's so fun. You don't even need to do that. Kill? You're like, kill! It saves the frames. Not very many on this particular run because you have to almost walk straight past where he... You're like, save! Be a hero! We got one vote for kill and one vote for save. Oh, you're probably gonna do save on yours, so you want to see both. Okay, that makes sense. You got even one frame is worth it. I guess it is, right? You're on some kind of marathon speed run. Okay, so this boss. Um, luckily, I've crafted ice here. And I've got the Hyper Top Hat. That, that becomes really important towards the end of this boss fight. She gets crazy all mad and she starts doing these lightning spirals like a lot. She does them so much that they're freaking almost impossible to dodge and it's like impossible to hit her. Unless you've got a really long reaching Top Hat at this point, which is what the, the Hyper Top Hat gives you. So hitting her with your Top Hat and, and the Hyper Top Hat is a great solution. If you have bombs and you can throw them, throw the bombs with your top hat magnet, that's really powerful. Um, if not, if you don't have any of this kind of stuff, you don't have any like ranged attacks or projectiles, your only choice is gonna be to try just like get to her as fast as you can like I'm doing here and hit her with the sword as much as possible. Try not to get hit with the lightning. If you are gonna get hit with the lightning, stand still like I'm doing right here. I just stood still so I used my shield. Um, another trick is that when you eat a cactus, she becomes visible. This is where she's getting super pissed off. I'm gonna try and hit her with like, as much as possible with the top hat. Yeah, oh, yes! Bitch is crazy. Seven minutes, 47 seconds. That's one of the longer dungeons. One of the longer runs you gotta do in this in this particular speed run. Um, and it really helps to have, get all the health you can right here because there's really no refill until you get into the final dungeon. Just fans of, thanks man. So I'm escaping now. Um, so kill? Are we doing kill? I think we're doing kill. So I am not saving the Smith. I'm, we're gonna kill Smith. It's saving. We're saving the frames, and we're getting the alternate ending. Oh yes, yeah, cracking you up. Nice man. All right, I feel lonely because I don't have Smith. But it's okay, we're about to get Bell. All right, so. Uh, now we're getting Bell. So, I got the Killabombs by fighting that boss. There's other ways to get Killabombs in the world. So, there are multiple ways to wake her up. You can get her without having to go even fight on Songbringer. You can get, you can actually get to Songbringer with Vel. Because there's a, um, a Killabomb container for sale on one of the advanced stores in each world seed. So you can literally buy the kill bombs. You have to get the sack first because they're expensive, but you need, you need a diamond sack, lots of diamonds, and you can purchase kill bombs before you ever get to the Songbringer dungeon. Um, keep in mind, whenever you get Vel, you're gonna be losing out on Jib. So you're losing Jib's ability to get you more items, but you're gaining Vel's attack power, basically. So I'm just teleporting back to the home screen here instead of having to walk those four areas. 
And we're going to the tower, final dungeon. This is basically kind of like a a boss rush almost. Tower, dungeon, a boss rush, dungeon. And we're at 58 minutes. I'm pretty slow on this run. This might be more like an hour 20. It is, it is, well, yeah, I guess it kind of is more fun to have, to have that attack ability when you're playing co-op. It depends on your style as a player, I guess. If you're more of like a relaxed, mellow person, you're probably going to want to play as Jib. Um, it's mostly a single player game, you know, it's not really, the co-op really isn't the, the main focus of Songbringer, but I hope it is fun in whatever capacity it is, you know might be fun to have a friend over that's like maybe you know maybe a friend that doesn't even play video games you can just give them the controller and be like here be the little robot and it's a pretty easy role to play you know what i mean bell bell is definitely a harder role to play you but you also got to be paying attention if you're playing as jib you really got to be on it as far as scanning items go because if you let your if you let your friend down and you don't scan any items your friend's gonna die Rock is going to die because you can't get health. So it's a pretty important role to play as Jib. And also, playing as Jib, you can... Um, one second. Once again, the secret here is you want to kill at least one of these guys. There we go. Now the, the fight's all secure. If you kill one of those guys, they can't recombine. That's the trick to fighting this. So another thing about Jib is that you can... Um, you can distract enemies, which is crazy powerful. You can actually stop some enemies from ever even hitting rock. Um, like the, the dragon, for example. The ice dragon is a really easy one to distract. Um, as long as you're in front of rock, you can kind of like... Well, most of the time, the dragon will shoot at Jib instead. Right, it's like Tails and Sonic or, um, or the other characters in Secret of Mana. I'm gonna set down a um, super bomb, or I mean a kill bomb here. Um, secrets to fighting these this double boss here is if you can kill one of them at a time, it can help. Or I mean, if you focus on one of these guys at a time, I just almost lost track of which one I was fighting there. But if you can, yeah, isolate them, it helps. You're a pretty powerful warrior at this point when you have um, the glove and the chip and crafted weapons and all that. So just like you gotta use all your stuff at once to just kick as much ass as you can. I'm hitting this guy with the ghost sword, um, which has, has been crafted with fear, which does some extra damage and causes enemies to panic. And I'm hitting him with ice a lot to freeze him. Um, I wasn't really using any bombs there, but bombs have the acid, so that does like some corrosive damage or like some damage over time, basically. So yeah, those bosses are pretty... Those, are, those guys are always easy for me, I don't know why, but maybe it's just because this run has ice. This is one of my favorite boss fights. Sadly, I'm using a technique where he doesn't shine, I'm freezing him a lot, so it's, it's, it's kind of cheap almost, just hitting him a lot. But when you're first fighting this guy, this guy's crazy hard because he does a ton of damage, so if you get hit by his attacks, you're really going to wear down your health fast. So what I'm doing here is I'm blinking a lot to get to get away from his attacks and also freezing him as much as possible to just make him um, stop attacking me, basically. So that's why I say it's almost cheap in a way, but I mean it's it's strategic. All 
Alright, 7 minutes 30 seconds, that's alright, I guess. It's not a very fast run. I'm excited to see speedrunners, like proper speedrunners, actually play this game. See what kind of times people can get. When somebody finally beats the game in under half an hour, I'm gonna go ape shit crazy. It's gonna be like, what? That's crazy awesome! What? This is the secret cache of cactuses before the final boss fight. You gotta know about this. You gotta know about this. It's right there. And then on this other side right here, you got bombs. So you can refill your bombs and your cactuses. That's a lovely secret. Yeah, I do too. What will it be? So I'm, I typically save here because sometimes I do die on the final boss. It doesn't really matter, I guess, because I'm a permadeath. I basically just wasted some frames there. Here's some more frame wasting. I love killing all these things. Ugh, oh, satisfying. Alright, final boss has three different phases. It helps to clear all these um, pillars out of the way with the kill bomb first. Um, so, if you stand still when he lands, he does this like attack wave thing. Stand still, let your shield absorb the damage. That is one, one key to fighting this boss. Another key is you cannot, you cannot get hit, hit, hit get hit by him when he goes off the screen and comes back. When he lands on the ground, he does a ton of damage and you're like almost dead. After two after two of those, you're practically dead. So watch out for his attacks. Sometimes you see me like going down to the bottom of the screen. That works pretty well, usually, before he changes into his, in, into his second or third forms. Um, and then, you also want to dodge his sword attack when he does that. When he swings his sword around and then slams it on the ground, that does a good amount of, like a medium amount of damage right there. And getting hit with maybe four to eight of those and, and you'll be dead. So avoid those as much as possible too. I'm going to meditate through these. Because I love this music. I just want to hear this music. You found a stash worth 40 and Rock responded by saying it was 100? Oh, really? That's weird. Huh. Oh, this is a really important point for fighting this boss. What happens there is he goes into this, like, intermediate mode where he's got, where he's out there and he's shooting this pink ray out of his eye at you and stuff. There's only one way to win there. There's only one way to even get him out of that. You'll keep doing that forever, and you'll feel like the whole boss fight is just like impossible, unless, unless you eat a cactus or meditate. That's the only way to get him get through past that phase of the boss fight. There is a trick to fighting the final boss, and that is it. You just learned it. So when he goes into that phase, eat a cactus and or meditate. I'm actually not doing too well on this fight. I'm already down past half my health, and I I still have a flask. I still have I should have a few. Whoa! Watch out! Uh, well, I gotta use my flask already. Okay. There we go, he's into his third phase now.
Oh, another trick to this boss fight is if you're meditating, um, Vel does a, more damage. Vel gets a shield. See how Vel has that purple outline? This is the only point in the game where she ever gets that, is this is when you meditate during this final boss fight. So if you meditate, you can't do anything. You're stuck doing nothing but sitting there and meditating. But Vel becomes more powerful. So it's a way of, it's a way for you to let go and still beat the game if you want. You can actually sit there and the meditate through this entire fight and beat the final boss that way. You're basically letting the AI win for you. Um, but it takes a long time. It takes like a good 45 minutes, according to most of my tests. So, but that is one viable way that I, I, I consciously decided that players should have to beat the game. Is if you want to just sit there and meditate, that's cool. That's a good. That's one strategy. It's not going to get you any time, any good times, or good scores. But you can't beat the game that way. This guy's too hard. So, um, good things that we picked up during this run to fight this guy are the ice armor, so you don't get frozen during this last phase here, and the lightning armor, so you don't get hit with his uh, lightning attacks, and then of course having tons of cactuses and just eating them on almost every time he goes flying into the air, you want to kind of be eating a cactus, and that's like kind of the optimal time, and then you just hit him as much as you can with whatever you have as far as weaponry goes. There we go. Alright, so we're at about 110 here. There's a few things left to do to beat the game, but that's it. I actually didn't die! Wow. I really thought I was actually going to die. It's amazing. how you beat the game. Your game time stops the second you do this. You lose control at this point. Over the controller. There you go. Songbringer in one hour and eleven minutes. So I hope um I hope you kinda got a good overview from this video of whoops. All the things you'll need to know beat song bringer. Um, this is the... There's two endings. This is gonna be the second ending, which is more like the alternate ending. This is where you don't save Smith, you kill Smith, and you get this ending. If you save Smith, you get the other ending. If you get 100% items, do you see Rocket to Speedo? <laughs> What's up, baby? Oh, there's my live stream. It's hot, right? It's 100 today? Oh my god, no wonder like my laptop's on fire. There you go. There you go. Whew. I'm sleepy. I was up real late releasing the game last night. Butterflies in my stomach. Getting very little sleep. I was doing an AMA today on Reddit. Most of the day. 
just making sure everybody getting, is getting the game, you know, like making sure it's all good on Humble and all good on GOG and all good on Steam. It's been a lot of work, but I'm really glad to have uh, Songbringer out now. It's like a real big relief. Yeah, I need to sleep a lot tonight. Uh, it was on the subreddit, um, Xbox One, I think. Yeah, R, Xbox One. Um, there's a link from my Twitter. There's definitely one there, you'll find it. Yeah, so basically you leave, if you don't save Smith in the ending, Jib is dead, basically. Nice. So, okay, official time was an hour and 11.05. These speedruns, I never get good map percentage or items. It's just like about that, 47, 48%. Score is at 660,000. So, it, how does, how does, how does Songbringer calculate its score? It's all three things, time, map, and items, all count 33% each towards your overall score. Um, the best score you can get is 1 million points, um, except actually it's 1.1 million points in permanent mode because you just get, you get more points for permanent mode automatically. Um, so basically your time, your map percentage, and your item percentages all count equally towards your overall score. Time is exponential and works, you know, so if you beat the game in one minute, you get 100% towards your score, towards your time portion of your score. And then if you beat it in like 32, if it takes you 32 whole hours, it will be 0% towards your time portion of your score. And in between those, it's an exponential curve so that, so that there's still a difference between each time, basically. Um, a significant difference. And then map percentage and item percentages is straight linear. So if you get 100% items, that's basically 333,000 points towards your score. And if you get 100% map, same thing. Yeah, James, man. So James was um, one of the what, part of Double Eleven. He just he just passed away last week. And so this is our way to honor him and remember him and his contributions to many games. Yeah. Sweating, hungry, sleepy. Gotta get some food. Some sleep. HD, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Oh, it's, I can't I can't type in the chat. I'm not logged in. <laughs> but what's up, HD Zero? How you doing, man? How's everything? Thank you once again, backers. This project would not have been pa possible without the Kickstarter. All, everyone that backed the project. And everyone that pre-ordered it after the Kickstarter, too. A lot of the names you're seeing here are people that pre-ordered the game after the Kickstarter. Um, and for each person that pre-ordered the game, I basically emailed them and said, hey, would you like to be in the credits? Just tell me your name. And these are all people that replied to my emails and, um, and wanted their name in the credits because they either pre-ordered or backed the game. It's Kickstarter, so. Wow, all of a sudden we're getting spam again. Spam in the chat, man. It's been a while since we had spam in the chat. Maybe because I'm streaming in the Songbringers category today, rather than good old game development. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm eternally thankful to everyone that supported this project over the three years of making it. All the live streams, it's so great to have a good connection with y'all, you know what I mean? To have somebody to share these moments with. And, you know, when you're developing a game alone, you don't have anyone to um, joke around with, you know, and talk about stuff with. And it's really great to have you guys have you guys and just be able to share. Yeah, these Jeff are, these are backers. And then up above, that was uh, my publisher, Double Eleven. So, yep. I may have created this game solo, but a lot of people went into actually bringing you this game. Um, there's, you know, getting the game ported to Xbox and PlayStation is no easy task. So, um, props to Double Eleven for helping me there and, and getting it all there and supporting the project in many other ways like um, getting the game to expos and marketing and everything. Thanks Kovarni! And then there's lots of people also that helped translate the game. There's people that translated the game to different languages and the, some of the, those people you saw in the beginning of the credits with their names in gold. Nice, you saw your name? Well, there you go. Uh, so Double Eleven got in touch with me during the Kickstarter. You saw your name too, Frozen Claw? Nice. Feels good, nice. Thanks, Frozen Clone. Appreciate it. Well, guys, I'm gonna call it quits on the stream now. Um, I gotta get some rest. I got a lot of emails to reply to, too. I mean, just like, the game got launched last night. I barely slept. And I still have a full inbox, like fifth, more than 50 new emails that I gotta respond to. Like, and probably before I go take some sleep, so. Yes, Gothic Polar, yes, there are updates coming out. There's more content, um, yeah, there's more content coming. There's updates, and and bug fixes, of course. There's gonna be, I'm sure there's some bugs in there. I, I, you saw one bug the whole time during that stream where it had this, like, dialogue off the screen. It kept coming back. Whenever you'd walk off screen, it would be this dialogue only if you walk west. Um, that's one little bug, for example, it'll get fixed. And then, like, there'll be lots of minor art improvements, things like that, too, I'm sure. Yeah, thanks for watching the stream, you guys. I appreciate all your support. VR, please. <laughs> nice one. Alright guys, well I appreciate you, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all on the next stream.